What up, everybody? This is your boy, Tech G, back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 221002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about security on Soho wireless and wired network. So in the following sections, we are going to be discussing wireless specific security, such as changing the default SSID, setting encryption, disabling SSID broadcast, antenna and access point placement, radio power levels, and WPS. So changing the default SSID. So in Wi-Fi, a service set is a group of wireless network devices which share a service set identifier or the SSID, which is essentially the label a user assigns to a network name. All wireless networking devices such as WAPs or wireless access points and wireless routers have a default SSID assigned to them by a manufacturer. And that information is readily available online for most common device models that will provide the default username and password to gain access to the device. To help secure the SSID for a wireless router or wireless access point, you want to be sure that the SSID does not include the following, such as your name, your first or last name, your company name, your location, or any other readily identifiable information. Next is setting the encryption. So setting the encryption for wireless networks, whether they are business networks or Soho networks. I've already talked about this in the video titled wireless security protocols and authentication. So go to my playlist for the CompTIA A plus 221002 playlist and look for video 2.3. Disabling SSID broadcast. So disabling the SSID broadcast essentially means your Wi-Fi networking devices aren't advertising the SSID, meaning if you are a casual Wi-Fi user looking for a network to connect to, your smartphone or laptop is not going to see the name of the disabled SSID. However, just because the SSID is disabled does not mean that it isn't broadcasting and cannot be located. One way to locate a disabled SSID ID is to simply know the name of the network to get access to it. Another way is to use a network analyzer tool, which can quote unquote see disable SSID. So even though CompTIA suggests that disabling an SSID is a good security measure to prevent a casual user from trying to gain access to a network, disabling the SSID is not going to prevent a hacker from discovering the network's name to try to gain unauthorized access to that network. Antenna and access placement. This is very important when it comes to users connecting to a wireless network with a strong signal. The ideal location for an access point is to be placed in a central location if possible, which would offer the greatest coverage to devices physically in the vicinity of the access point. When it comes to antenna placement on the access point, the antennas should be set at 90 degree angles to one another. To help reduce electrical interference, you want to be sure that the access point is away from other wireless devices, speakers, or any other device that consumes a lot of electricity. Then we have radio power levels. So wireless routers and access points all have adjustable radio power levels. If the power levels are set too high, devices located outside of the perimeter of the business or home may be able to pick up on the network and attempt to gain access to it. If the power levels are set too low, devices within the perimeter that should be able to gain access to the network might not be able to locate the network to gain access. Do we have WPS or Wi-Fi protected setup? So Wi-Fi protected setup is a network security standard to create a secure wireless home network. The point of WPS protocol is to allow home users who know little of wireless security and may be intimidated by the available security options to set up Wi-Fi protected access, as well as making it easy to add new devices to an existing network without entering long passphrases. And the two most common ways to configure a network using WPS UPS are as follows. You have the pin method, which is the default method. So a pin marked on the router may be entered into each new device added to the network. And then you have the push button method. The wireless router or wireless access point may require devices to physically push a button or push a software button in a setup program to establish a connection. 
Let's talk about changing default usernames and passwords. So as previously mentioned, default username and passwords for almost all wireless routers and wireless access points can be found online and documentation readily available for the device's manufacturer. And to protect against potential hackers from exploiting your network, it is highly recommended that you change the default username and passwords immediately upon the initial setup of the device and network. Another way to further secure the integrity of your wireless router or wireless access point, you want to configure the device to where it can only be managed by a wired ethernet connection only. Enabling Mac filtering. So enabling Mac address filtering lets only devices with specific Mac addresses connect to your router. And this was discussed in the video titled Logical Security Concepts. So once again, go check out my playlist for the 220 1002 exam and you will find the video in there. And that picture is what the thumbnail looks like for that video. Let's talk about assigning static IP addresses. So the DHCP, this stands for the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol Server. This is a network management protocol used on internet protocol local area networks. With Soho routers, the DHCP component is built into the device and is responsible for assigning IP addresses to devices trying to connect to the local area network. To restrict access to the LAN by only allowing certain devices to obtain an IP address from the DHCP, the DHCP setting would need to be disabled, which would then require the admin of the network to manually assign static IP addresses to devices that are trying to connect to the LAN. We have firewall settings. So wireless access points and wireless routers offer firewall settings that include the following. You have things such as access logs, filtering of specific types of traffic, enhanced support for VPNs, and network address translation, which prevents internet traffic from determining private IP addresses of devices used on the network. And also you wanna see the router's manufacturer's documentation for more information about other advanced security features. Let's talk about port forwarding. So in computer networking, port forwarding, which is also known as DNAT or destination network address translation. This is an application of NAT that redirects a communication request from one address and port number combination to another while the packets are traversing a network gateway, such as a router or a firewall. And this was discussed in my playlist titled CompTIA A plus 221001 or the hardware portion. And the name of that video was called basic wired wireless Soho networks. And that is what the thumbnail looks like for that video. So go look at that, watch that video and get your learn on something serious. Disabling ports. So you should always disable unused ports to prevent hackers from exploiting these unused ports to gain unauthorized access to the network. Blocking TCP and UDP ports. This can be performed with firewall apps such as the Windows Defender Firewall with advanced security. Content filtering and parental controls. So content filtering, this is the use of a program to screen and or exclude access to web pages or email that is deemed objectionable. Content filtering is used by companies as part of their firewalls and also by Soho personal computers. Content filtering works by specifying content patterns such as text strings or objects within images that if matched indicate undesirable content that is to be screened out. A content filter will then block access to this content Windows Defender is Microsoft's anti-spyware that includes tools such as content filtering and parental controls, in addition to other tools such as virus and threat protection. And this offers tracking of Windows Defender and third-party antivirus software. You have account protection. This includes Windows Hello and Dynamic Lock features. You have firewall and network protection. This includes access control rules and other network domain security settings. You have app and browser control. This indicates filter controls for browsers and apps. You have device security. This tests device security and sets core security protocols. And then you have device performance and health, and this scans devices and apps to report on their status. And then you have family options. This provides parental controls and family device management options. Now, Apple's parental controls in Mac OS, they can be found by selecting the Apple menu, system preferences, and then going to the parental controls. Linux distributions, they do not include parental controls, but parental controls can be added by way of various third-party apps.
Let's talk about updating firmware. So a firmware update, this is a software program used to update the firmware in a device such as a wireless access point and or a wireless router. Firmware updates are available from hardware manufacturers. These updates can solve a myriad of potential issues with the device to include solving possible operational problems and or enhancing Wi-Fi features, security, and its overall ease of use. To determine if a wireless access point or wireless router is in need of a firmware update, you want to go ahead and do the following. You want to check the device's configuration information to record the current firmware version and to get the proper model number for that device. You want to check the vendor's website to see if a firmware update for your device's particular model is available. You want to download the firmware update to a PC that can be connected to the device via an Ethernet cable. You want to connect the device to a PC. You want to locate the device's firmware update dialog and then you want to go ahead and follow the instructions to commence the firmware update. And then let's talk about physical security. So physical security describes security measures that are designed to deny unauthorized access to facilities, equipment and resources, and to protect personnel and property from damage or harm. Now, this has already been talked about in section 2.1. So go to my playlist for the 221002 video playlist and look for the video title physical security measures so that you can learn more about physical security in more detail. All right, so now let's get into some of this outstanding check on learning, shall we? So the first question is, which wireless access point configuration settings allow for adjusting the boundary range of a wireless signal? Is it APWPS configuration? Is it the power level controls? Is it the maximum transmission unit or is it the quality of service? So which one of these will allow for you to adjust the boundary range of the wireless signal? The correct answer is the power level controls. Next question. A solution that simplifies configuration of a new wireless network by enabling non-technical users to easily set up new networks, configure network security settings, and add new devices to an existing network is known as what? Is it WPA, WPS, WEP, or WAP? So which one of these is designed for non-technical users that want to hurry up and get some Wi-Fi security on and popping? And the correct answer is WPS, or Wi-Fi Protected Setup. And the final question is, which of the following is an application software that selectively blocks access to websites? Is it Captive Portal, a firewall, Content Filter, or a proxy server? So which one of these is a software app that selectively blocks access to websites? The correct answer is uh, a content filter. All right. So in summary, we've talked about the security on Soho wireless and wired networks. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go visit my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 221002 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, Peace.